Welcome to Donnelly Boat Building, where we're currently restoring a boat built by the Austin Healy Car Company called the Healy 75. If you're new to the channel, then make sure you drop back and check out some of the previous videos that we've done on this boat, where we've been stripping out some existing repair work and patterning parts with a view to replacing all of the internal woodwork that's in this boat. In this video, we're going to be installing the frames and stringers that we've built previously. And along the way, there's going to be a couple of little tips and tricks for various different methods that I use for that process. Most of that is going to be based around epoxy work. And I've got some good tips for you on a new filleting tool that I've recently been using and I can highly recommend. So, hope you enjoy the video. Let's get started. Okay, so on the last video, somebody was asking about how we remove the amine blush. So I figured we'd start out with that in this video. It's quite a simple process really, um, you don't need anything too fancy to get rid of this, we just use uh, warm soapy water. So a little bit of warm water and some fairy liquid in a bucket, give it a good swill around. And then for removing it I use a scotch bright pad or a Merca Merlon pad as you can see me using here. Which is a slightly abrasive um, sort of fibre uh, sanding pad and I just use that with plenty of water. Um, make sure that I keep rinsing the pad nice and regularly to get the blush off there. And um, it's basically effect, the effect of just lightly keying the surface, but most importantly, washing that blush away at the same time. So I'm just making sure that I'm nice and thorough and I cover all the areas that are potentially going to have blush on them, which is pretty much everything that's exposed to air. And any surface... Um, certainly that is going to need bonding or coating in the future operations, which is pretty much everything in this case. So all of those parts get washed. Once they're washed, we dry them off with a paper towel and then leave them overnight. And you can see that this is roughly what they look like the next day. Uh, one of the benefits to using the Scotch-Brite pad is that um, any areas that you may have missed will show up slightly shiny, as you can see here. Um, that's just a little bit of an indication that I might not have been so thorough in that area. So you can revisit that a second time and do a second washing slash keying operation if needs be. Following on from that, any surface that is going to need a secondary bonding um, application, which is the sides and certainly the bottom faces of these frames, needs to be keyed even further. So we'll use an 80 grit sandpaper for that, just to really heavily scratch up the surface and allow the epoxy to bond to it when we put these frames in the boat. So then once that was done with all of the frames and stringers, I'm ready to start putting them into the boat. And I started with the transom bow. So I'm using the West System microfibers additive to thicken the epoxy for bonding all these frames in. It's got quite good gap filling properties, so it works really well for, um, for this situation. And it also fillets fairly well. So um, we're bonding all the frames in with that and then just filleting the corners which brings me quite nicely on to being able to show you a new tool that I found for doing epoxy fillets and application. So if you've done epoxy filleting work, then you've almost certainly seen one of these, the wooden tongue depressor or um, custom rounded filleting stick. It's the, uh, the tool that a lot of people use and it's really good for getting a nice rounded, nicely shaped fillet. My kind of gripe with this thing is that you always get these little tram lines of extra epoxy either side of the rounded fillet, which need cleaning up as a second operation. Um, it's also really difficult to get the epoxy into place using one of these, and you often need to use something else in conjunction with it, such as a piping bag. I've kind of been trying to come up with a way that we can possibly do fillets and um, load the epoxy into the joint at the same time. And I'll show you in just a second, a really good tool that I found for doing that. So sometimes I'll use the tongue depressor or wooden stick. Sometimes I'll also use these filleting balls, which are really nice at getting a nice round fillet. And it also doesn't matter your angle of attack to the joint because it's a ball end. Um, you can come at this from any direction, any angle, and you still get the same radius to the fillet, which is really quite nice. The disadvantage of that is obviously that you still get these tram lines of additional epoxy on the edges of your surface. And um, it's also very difficult to move the epoxy around the surface with the filleting ball because it's just a round head. So the new tool that I've recently come across for doing this job really nice and quickly and easily is this, which is a silicon food mixing spatula. This particular one has got a rounded outer edge, which is perfect for the fillets and a square corner as well. 
it's kind of feathered to, out towards the edges and it's quite soft and flexible, which inadvertently makes it a really good tool for epoxy work and filleting. You can see here that when you run down an edge, you've not just got the shape of your fillet, but you've also got the blade of the spatula that runs in 90 degrees either direction up the surface that you're filleting. That means that you've actually got nice control over the two faces that you normally get these tram lines on when you're using a mixing stick or a filleting ball. So when I do this, I apply quite a lot of mixture to the face of the spatula. Another real benefit to this tool is that you can carry a lot of mixture on it, which means that this tool is effectively a three in one. It's loading out your epoxy into the joint. It's creating your rounded fillet, and it's also cleaning up your faces um, where you normally get that tram lining. So I put quite a lot of mixture on there and I use that to just effectively load up the joint and then progressively clean it with either the, uh, the flat faces of the spatula or the rounded edges. And as you can see here, it's quite nice to be able to just feather into a corner and clean up internal corners, even on a three-way joint, which you can see here. The square corner of the spatula is also really handy if all goes wrong and you suddenly decide that you need to remove all the material from your fillet, you can quite quickly and easily hook that back out and clean the surface up. It's also really nice if you're working on really neat looking jobs where you just want a tiny little fillet or basically no fillet at all. It's really good for just cleaning all that material out of there. And then when all is said and done and the epoxy is dry, because it's silicon, it just peels and cracks off. So they're really nice and easy to clean and reuse many times over. So if you're doing epoxy work and filleting and you haven't tried one of these already, I highly recommend going to your local cooking shop or online shop and picking yourself up a silicon spatula that looks like this. I think you'll really like it. I certainly do. So with the new uh, filleting spatula on the go, you can see that I'm using that as a general tool for applying the epoxy to the surface, um, which it works really well for as well. And then um, once the part is pushed down and squashed into place and we've got a bit of squeeze out on the edges, you can use it to start to shape that squeeze out to form a fillet around the outside of the part, which it works really well for. So you can see that we put the transom bow in first, and then this little keel pad timber that tucks into that so it's jointed into the transom bow. This timber is going to carry and support the prop shaft strut and the rudder log. So um, it uh, wants to be quite a rigid piece of timber, which is the reason that we've used oak for this. So that gets um, held down to the bottom of the boat. I actually screwed that from underneath because there's holes in place there for the um, prop shaft strut. So I used those to pull that piece of timber down nice and uh, firmly and then fill it around the outside. And then I'm on to installing the main set of frames. So these were all done the same way with the epoxy thickened with West System microfibers, just to give us a good little bit of gap fill in there for anywhere that it's needed. And to get a really strong bond between the frames and the bottom of the boat. Originally the frames in this boat, they didn't actually touch the bottom of the boat directly at all. They sat on top of all of these half round stringers that you can see running through the boat here and then they were just glassed with polyester up the sides um, and that was the only way that they were actually bonded into the hull. So what I wanted to do when we put everything back here was to create a much stronger contact between the frames and the bottom of the boat. So that's why we've decided to do these little cutouts to go around the stringers and so that the frame can sit right down on the bottom of the hull and have a nice bit of contact there. So once those are put in place, as I say, I run over those with the, uh, the spatula filleting tool. And the other thing about this tool that's really great for particularly this application is because it's really flexible, it works really well on an uneven surface. So where we've got the sort of undulations in the surface of the glass here, it rides up and over those really nicely and forms a good smooth fillet nice and easily. And what you can see I'm doing here is I'm just retooling a fillet basically. So um, once it's been sat there for a little while and the epoxy start to set up, you can actually go back over a fillet and just re-smooth it. And if there's any slight slump to the epoxy, then that just helps you to correct that. But it also just smoothens out the surface of it and gives you a much nicer finish. So um, it's a little bit dependent on timing. If I'm still around the job as the epoxy starts to set up, then I'll often go back over a fillet and just retool it and get a slightly better finish on there. It's not always the case if you do them at the end of the day, of course, then um, you're not still around when the by the time the epoxy starts to set up but um, it's quite nice to do if uh, 
if you've got the option of doing it. So then the final piece to get installed for now were the two main stringers. These go into all the uh, notches that we cut in the frames um, previously in the other video to align these and set them up correctly with their heights. So they go in again just using some epoxy thickened with uh, microfibers and they're just screwed into place with one screw that goes through the stringer into the frame uh, which for now the sort of primary purpose of that is just to pin them in place whilst the epoxy dries these will actually have some little timber cleats that go in afterwards as well so that that'll be a little vertical square section timber that will just run down one side of the frame and tie that into the stringer which is what was on there originally so we'll put those in a bit further down the line so you can see for now this just gets a screw through the side of the stringer and we're just using stainless steel screws for this. Um, I didn't really see the need to go for silicon bronze or anything like that with this boat. I'm pretty sure these were actually just standard steel screws originally, uh, but they're highly unlikely to come into contact with very much water at all. And um, the majority of the strength really is done with the epoxy here. So um, they're just a secondary precaution really. And just to sort of, as I say, pin this in place whilst the epoxy dries. So I put the stringers in place with this, um, you can see I'm using a six foot level clamp to the top of the stringer here. That's just to make sure really that I keep the top edge of that stringer nice and straight and I don't inadvertently bend it out of shape. It's also just a good way for me to know that the top of that stringer is straight and um, if there's been any kind of movement in the positioning of the frames when I've put all of those in, it will be quite obvious to see because it won't quite fit uh, down on the frames perfectly but everything worked out good so uh, that's nice to know so there we go finished shot of all the frames installed and the stringers glued in place and uh, we've got some nice structure back inside that boat now which is a really good feeling actually so there's a couple more bits of timber still to install in this boat there's the little half moon um, piece of timber that goes up forward in the stem which I was calling the gripe in the previous video if you remember that We've got another piece of timber that fits just above that and that goes right up in the top of the stem and that carries um, what would potentially be like a bow eye or something like that if you wanted to install one in this boat. And there's also the vertical timber that runs from the transom bow um, up into the lifting eye on the aft deck. So those three pieces we'll put in a little bit further down the line. For now we just wanted to focus on getting this main structure to hold that bottom of the boat back in shape. So that's as far as we're going with this video. What we're gonna do in the next video is that we'll be turning the boat back over again. And now that we've got all that structure holding the bottom nice and firm, we're gonna be removing the straightening timber that we put on the keel. And hopefully the keel will stay in shape now. So once we do that, we can then start to have another look at the bottom and see on a sort of finer level how that's going to turn out. So we'll be taking the paint system off the bottom of the boat. We'll probably be taking the gel coat off as well because it's quite badly cracked and crazed. So we want to strip all that back and we'll do an assessment of how the outside of the hull's looking. At that point, we'll be able to start filling and fairing the bottom to sort of dial in the last little bits of getting it back into shape and uh, put a nice fair bottom back onto this boat. So in the next video, we're going to be doing a little bit more epoxy work with filling and fairing. Then we're going to be getting on to doing some paint and stuff. So um, if you're new to the channel and you're not already subscribed, please remember to subscribe if you want to keep up to date with everything else that we're doing on this boat. And if you haven't seen any of the other videos, make sure you drop back and take a look at them and you can see all of the work that came before this one. So hope you enjoyed the video and I will catch you in the next one. Cheers guys.